Trevor Cornwell, and I'm the founder and CEO of AppBacker. And we are a wholesale marketplace for apps. And what we do is try and help developers uh, get the very best distribution uh, for their app. And we do that uh, using an algorithm. And we look at every app in the marketplace, and we try and find the right fit for it in terms of stores. We do the same thing for stores. Um, we use our algorithm to be able to handpick the best apps across multiple different platforms. And I'm going to walk you through uh, a little bit about how we do that. Um, before we get started, I, I'm interested in how many people in the audience here are developers today. Okay, that's great. And um, how many developers have already built something for Tizen? Okay, so a few of you. Okay. And for those developers, how many of you uh, built for iOS and or uh, Android first? And that was sort of a gateway drug for you. You started there and then moved on to HTML5. Did, did all the developers start somewhere else before starting? Yeah, OK. So um, really appreciate you being here. Um, there are microphones. Um, I'm going to take questions at the end, but I'm also very happy to take questions as we're going along. So don't hesitate if you have something either that's unclear or that you want to add to it. Um, we're very happy to um, take as many questions uh, as we can. So I'm going to start out um, talking about the problem um, first. And I think if you're a developer, you know that uh, there's a hugely fragmented marketplace. And the marketplace fragments in a couple of different ways. The first is the number of platforms. We've had some conversations today about why uh, another uh, why another platform. And there are lots of good reasons. We talked a little bit about it last night at the uh, at the partner uh, presentations about maybe why there's a need for Tizen. Challenge is even within a given platform, developers have to decide what's the best way to be able to exploit the marketing of their app. If you're a developer on Android, you have lots of different choices. You have um, Amazon, Nook, um, which each have their own um, upload process. The APK has to be stored uh, within that platform. And then there are lots of other opportunities uh, for companies, uh, websites, carriers who feature certain apps. And they can give an app more distribution, but you have to enter into some sort of relationship uh, with them. And then, of course, um, the multi-platform issue of do you put your app onto Windows? Do you put it onto Tizen? Um, yes, we hope. Firefox. Um, do you uh, look at BlackBerry? Um, what version of BlackBerry? There are a number of different technology providers out there which allow you to be able to use uh, your app and deploy it. All sorts of different choices about how you best get your app um, to market. And for a developer, all of these choices are really significant because typically developers um, are relatively smaller shops and they may have uh, one, two, three people and how you extend your resources um, becomes really critical. There's an issue on the other side um, as well for consumers. There are almost a million apps uh, in iOS, um, just about the same for Google Play, um, 150,000 for Windows, 100,000 for BlackBerry, so choice is really um, tough. And typically, um, where choice takes place right now, if you're a consumer, is just looking in the top 10 lists. Um, something like 25 publishers account for 50% of the revenue within iOS and Android. So you have a problem for a consumer where they're trying to digest all of these different apps. You also have that problem as a developer and how do you get discovered when you're one of a million? And it's a little bit of a key to what I've been talking about, but the a lot of people think that the answer to a great app is that it's gone viral. And that's a little bit of a myth, because in truth, most apps that do well have a significant marketing budget behind them. You're doing something um, to 
incentivize people to download their app. And there are a lot of different tools and techniques to it. But it's not as simple as an app being good that it's going to be discovered. So this problem is really not good for consumers or for developers. For consumers, they're forced to either search, and a lot of times they don't know what they're really looking for. They want something to entertain them. They want something to engage them. They don't necessarily have a specific purpose um, that they're looking for. Sure, if you're looking for Evernote or an app that you know, um, search is really good, or if you can specifically define a problem, it works. But for most consumers, most of the time, um, looking for something isn't the best way to find it. And within a small um, device, seeing a display of search results uh, isn't as simple as it is on, on a larger uh, device like a PC. And of course, for developers, um, they face this issue of creating a great app, which they're really passionate about. They've probably spent a lot of their resources, and there's no way for them to easily get discovered. So the, the easy answer to it, or the obvious answer that a lot of people look to is search, and they think, well, you know, that could solve it. But as I was saying, um, it doesn't seem to be a, a really great way to be able to find and discover apps. So we created something called Exchange, and the idea behind it is that there are thousands and thousands of good apps. And not all of them, not most of them, are sitting in the top 10. We created an algorithm that looks at a variety of different factors uh, based on a predictive analytic machine learning model to be able to identify the apps that have the potential to be great. And this isn't some big black box Wizard of Oz kind of formula. It looks at public data. It looks at how many reviews does the app has. It looks at what are people saying about the app? Are they saying this app is fantastic, I love it? Are they saying this app crashes my Samsung device or my Motorola device or my Huawei device? And we look at the length of reviews. Are people taking time to say something about it? How long has the app been since it was last updated? There are a lot of very basic metrics that are prevalent to any app that we think can tell a lot about whether it has the potential to be great. And what we do is, with our algorithm, which I'll talk some more about, is we help these apps get to the right platforms. We help direct them to carrier channels, to OEMs, to stores that want to feature apps which are compelling. And we also work with new platforms that are looking to discover meaningful and compelling apps and help them to get to the right place on the store so that they can get the attention that they deserve. So to talk about it again as a problem uh, where two sides are facing a similar issue leads to a marketplace as a solution. And developers are clearly facing a problem of looking for profitable solutions. The number of apps that have over $3,000 in sales is very, very low. So this dollar and a dream approach that iOS perfected, where you can put your app into what really is a consignment store and hope it works, is great um, if, you're, if you're Apple, because you get hundreds of thousands of submissions. But if you want to make a living as a developer, if you want to get your content heard and seen and engaged, it doesn't work so well. And on the other side, what we saw was that carriers and OEMs and new platforms are also, at the very same time, looking for apps to distinguish themselves. Um, not to take anything away from hardware, because hardware makes a huge difference um, in, the, in the experience that somebody has. But once you get to that certain level of quality in terms of a device, what really distinguishes it is content. And that means that developers are hugely valuable to the success of any new platform. But what happens with most new platforms? They focus on identifying the top 20, 100, 2,000 apps that they feel are table stakes. They'll typically pay significant sums of money to get them ported over, which is fine. But all that that's done is achieved the very basic, the, the minimum that consumers willing to expect expects. Then, 
maybe what they do is they play the numbers game. They say, well, we have to have 100,000 apps in order to please an analyst or to be able to show that we have a viable platform. And then what happens with consumers? They come back and they say, you know what? This is a really suboptimal platform. It doesn't really engage me. It's not surprising me. It's not delighting me. I can get all of those apps already on another platform and more. I can get the table stakes and I can get hundreds of thousands of things. And even though it's difficult for me to search and find them, I know that they're there. So we believe that platforms, platforms, in order to be able to distinguish themselves, have to be able to do something different. And that's where great developers come in. Because we think there are many that are just undiscovered. That there are useful, relevant apps which are out there that have been created, maybe on iOS, maybe on Android, that should be on Tizen. Now, why does a developer decide not to immediately put his app onto Tizen even when he gets a phone call? Because the developer is looking at how can I maximize the distribution of my app? And the best way for most developers to be able to do that is to figure out how to exploit their sales within a given channel. And when they look at a new platform, they ask the same questions that we would ask as a manufacturer of any good. Is it going to sell? Is it going to get distributed? Is it going to be seen? And that matching process of being able to find the kinds of apps that can perform well on a new platform is critical. Because if you can answer that question for a developer, if you can say, your app has the potential to do very well because other apps like it are performing well, then you create a great match for both the developer and for the store. And that's how we get to Exchange. Exchange has a very basic uh, goal, which is to maximize selection, profit, and distribution for apps um, with minimum effort. So when we started Exchange, we said you know, developers are not going to want to spend a lot of time and effort uh, getting their app to different platforms. There are lots of different solutions out there, a lot of great solutions out there. Sentia, Marmalade, that can help you create an app and have it ready for different platforms. But we think the challenge goes beyond that. A developer needs to be able to take his app, port it to different platforms, and understand how it performs. He needs to be able to understand something about the platform to see whether there's potential and opportunity, and to decide whether it's worth the time to rewrite the app, maintain it, um, and have an engagement with customers um, through that portal. So, the way that we approach all of this is by having developed um, the App Score algorithm, which scores the apps from 1 to 10 using a variety of different elements that we've talked about before, and also takes data from the stores. So, the stores are really telling us which of the apps uh, that they would like to be able to feature on their platform. Then we use some antivirus screening so that we make sure that every app which goes um, onto a platform has been screened and spread. And this goes beyond just simple antivirus protection. Um, we look at for emerging markets to make sure that the app is light, that it's not pinging too, too many servers, because that doesn't work well uh, for a customer in an emerging market where there's limited bandwidth, or they're paying for bandwidth at a rate higher than we're used to paying in Korea or the United States. We put together our score with a last check on the app, and then we take those apps and we score them, and then we provide those best apps, those best in category apps, to our partners so that they can feature them on the stores. So the advantage to the developer is all of a sudden, by going through Exchange, his app is getting more distribution than it otherwise would have. And the benefit for the stores is they're getting to see the very best apps that they can have confidence in will delight customers. So we built Exchange as a platform that happens and works at a platform level. You come to Exchange, you see what your score is, and then your app gets to market. One of the things that we found is that um, some of the great platforms, Sencha, Marmalade, ones I was just mentioning, are the place where a developer comes and builds his app and can easily port his app to all sorts of different stores. But the developer may hold back and say, 
I don't want to port my app to Tizen. I don't want to port my app to BlackBerry because it's not familiar. So we take away that unfamiliarity by integrating with um, platform partners and displaying the app score that that app has, has achieved. And then we provide an incentive um, to that developer right at the point where he has the choice to port. So a couple of things happen. One, the developer with a great app has a chance to be able to earn um, some advanced revenue, which is nice. Um, somebody called it get out of bed money. It's not money that's going to change your life, but it's money to create a, an incentive for you to put your app onto the platform. But just as importantly, your app then can get tracked on a dashboard so you can see the performance of your app across multiple platforms in one place. And when you see a score for a given platform that is 8.5 or above on a 1 to 10 score, you know that your app resonates with that platform. It's an incentive it's unto itself for bringing your app um, to that platform. So in one place, um, you get an easy to manage dashboard. You can choose which app, um, which platform to deploy your app to, and you get an automated submission uh, through Exchange. So a lot happens to make it very easy um, for porting your app, for making decisions, and for getting the data about how your app is performing. It enables you to be able to track, analyze, distribute effortlessly, and get effective management over your app. So you think that, for developers, is a really key objective. So, just a quick look at how it happens. And uh, for those of you who are here today and tomorrow, we we'll invite you to come down to um, our stand. We'd love to show you and get your feedback on the score. But for a developer, um, you put your app uh, in, into uh, Exchange, and you see your score. And um, you'll first see a list of apps that match your app. And we do this across platforms. So even when you're creating a, an app on HTML5 and you haven't been on HTML5 before, we look to see if you have an app on Android or iOS or an existing platform so that we can get data about that um, to help uh, create a score. Um, an app that scores 8.5 or above is going to see um, offers um, for that app. And to give you a little bit of sense of what it looks like with an exchange, um, every developer gets this dashboard and is able to see um, when an app is requested by a given platform. So um, on any given dashboard, uh, a developer may have five, ten different offers to feature his app. Um, or to have his app sourced uh, for a particular store. And then, on the other side of it, the store is able to see a lot of information about which are the right apps for its platform. So they can search um, using basic terms by platform. They can look um, at minimum number of installs. They can look at ratings. There are a whole set of advanced uh, search features that they can do. So it's a very simple process for an operator of a store to be able to go past that top 10. And that's really the key thing in, that we're trying to bring to life. We think that discovery of apps um, doesn't happen primarily through search. It happens through curation, merchandising. If you look at the apps that sell best on iOS, it happens because a curator, someone in editorial, has decided that that's a great app. We think there's a better way. That combination of looking at the underlying elements of an app so that an operator of a store can look at hundreds of thousands of apps, really figure out which are the best ones, creates a great way to be able to identify and showcase uh, the best apps. So there are a whole set of different um, methods that a store can use to be able to figure out um, which are the best apps so that they can dynamically curate their store um, we give them the ability to search on everything from content maturity to the price of the app. And of course, our, our app score is kind of the um, core of the whole process. Stores can also then make easy offers uh, to developers. So 
sometimes um, we do this um, internally at AppBacker. We'll get the criteria that a store is looking for and we'll make offers directly to developers. But many platforms like BlackBerry um, will use our platform to make offers and stores will pay significant amounts of money to get that app um, over to the platform. We think what's interesting about this is that we can democratize that process so that every developer gets the opportunity to get an offer to be on a store. And again, we think it's great for stores because it gives them a chance to be able to distinguish themselves by offering really compelling and meaningful apps. And most importantly, it's something that benefits consumers because they're not finding just the apps that everybody else will see. They're seeing great apps, your app maybe, um, that hasn't got exposure, but has all the elements um, to be great. So that's a little bit about Exchange, um, and I would be happy, we have a little bit of time left, and I'd be happy to take any questions, um, discuss anything that, uh, that anybody would like to